really appreciate uh, you know, the, the support that we've had over the season. And this kind of culminates that with a, a great meal and a chance to kind of recognize some people. Uh, to start the banquet, uh, as always, I kind of like to go through and, and go through those thank yous that I have. And, and I know we've said this before, and you kind of hear this year after year, but it really takes a lot of people to run the program. It's, it, uh, it's a lot more than just kind of showing up on Fridays and being able to go through. Uh, so I'm going to go through and, and list a few people and just kind of recognize what they have done throughout the season. Uh, if I miss somebody, I truly do apologize. I've gone through this like 25 times to make sure I haven't missed anybody. And if I do, I, I truly do apologize for that. Uh, to start with, I'd like to thank Father Cotis for allowing us to use the, uh, the hall. It's a, it's a great venue, uh, especially away from school where we have an opportunity to kind of put everybody together. Uh, I know he is, uh, as I saw him walking in the door, he had to remind me once again how appreciative he was of the fact that we were helping with Oktoberfest. So I wanted to thank all of you again for that uh, and the players. That was a, a nice thing that we were able to do, and I hope we can continue to do that. So I'd like to thank him. If you get a chance to see him, make sure you thank him as well. Uh, next, uh, the senior parents who were putting all of this on, and then the senior parents and other parents I know that were involved with uh, providing meals throughout the year. I know uh, Mrs. Gronstall was kind of the uh, point person, at least the contact with me, and I know there was a lot of other people that were uh, included in that. She's probably upset that I'm pointing her out in general, but uh, specifically. Uh, but I really do want to thank all of you for putting all that together. Uh, at the beginning of the season, they had people sign up and, and kept that all organized. Uh, there are very few teams, if any teams, in the state of Iowa that have uh, the parents that support that way. They, where after school, before each game, they get a healthy meal. After each game, they get a healthy meal. Well, sometimes healthier, a little less healthy after the game. <laughs> Able to meal anyway. And uh, it's, it's something that's very, very unique and very special to St. Albert. So it's hopefully something we can continue to do. I really, really want to thank uh, all the parents who were part of that. Uh, let's go ahead and give those parents a round of applause. to say my little joke about keeping Casey's Pizza in, uh, in business this year. We had a lot of really far travel games, so I do thank you for that. Uh, Randy Sawyers is somebody who's not here. I was hoping he would be here. I recognized him last year as well. Uh, Randy is somebody who kind of behind the scenes is very, very dedicated to not just the football program, but St. Albert School. Uh, he's supposedly a part-time helper at St. Albert and I guess if 50 or 60 or 70 hours a week is part-time, I guess that's what we'll consider that. Uh, Randy has filmed all of our games for 25, 26, 7 years. Uh, that's a lot of Fridays that he's given up of his own time traveling, those types of things, never asked for any money or anything like that. Uh, so if you see Randy, make sure that you, uh, you thank him as well, not just for the football program, but uh, through for St. Albert. That would be great. Uh, another person who dedicates a lot of time, John Helton, I know he's here, he just walked in. Uh, somebody who, uh, who I call all the time when something comes up, I need this little thing done or that little thing done. Uh, he's always there to help me on that piece of it, especially when it comes to field work and volunteering time. And he even drags his two boys along once in a while so they can do some work for us. So uh, I really appreciate his help, uh, the maintenance staff at St. Albert, how well the field looks this year. Uh, once again, not a lot of programs that have to take all of their practices on their game field. And I was very happy with how it looks. So thank you, John. Another uh, piece of our program, another very important person, Father Monaghan, uh, who has always been uh, very, very supportive, not only of St. Albert, but of the football program. Uh, he helped out with some of our masses and our prayer services after school on Friday. Uh, the, the best thing that I can say about Father Monahan is he always sends me a little text message once in a while, a little encouragements, uh, a little keep it up, those kinds of things, and they always seem to come at the right time. So thank you, Father, for all of your, for all of your help. Uh, the Wednesday night crew, once again, I don't have any peace in organizing that. That just kind of takes care of itself. People show up and work uh, and makes our, uh, our field and our school a look as best as it can possibly look. I know that it's not just time, there's a lot of guys donating money and those types of things that go into that. They show up with loads of rock and all sorts of things to make sure things are happening. And I really, really do appreciate those guys on the Wednesday night crew. I know they have a little bit of fun with it as well, 
Hey, but uh, the work that they do is uh, is very important. So thank you, those people that work on. The I just saw that uh, Mrs. Goldwitzer got recognized, I think, was it at the volleyball games, the volleyball matches? Uh, well deserved, and I think everyone in here knows anything about St. Albert. Anytime you see Linda Goldwitzer, she's always working. I always say that whenever I see her, she's doing something. Uh, so make sure that we thank Mrs. Goldwitzer, the Booster Club, uh, setting up everything that she does. So thank you very much to the Booster Club and Mrs. Goldwitzer. Uh, our high school office staff, Ms. Cherney. Uh, I always, uh, it seems like any time I ask a favor, it's always like last second, like, hey, this has to happen like <laughs> in the next five minutes. She's always been very gracious, gracious about that. She could, uh, you know, chirp with me a little bit about that if, uh, you know, because it would be you know, well deserved. So I really do appreciate your help and the office help on getting those things put together. So thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mathai, once again this year, put together all of our shirts and everything. Uh, if you know me very well, that's not my forte. I told her that numerous times. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank her for putting all that together, designing, organizing. It was, uh, you know, a lot of work that was taken off of, of the staff. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the next two groups, actually three groups. I don't know if there's a lot of people that are part of this that are here, uh, but we do need to thank them uh, once again. Chain Gang, Press Box. Uh, and sports fan, people who just kind of come on Friday nights. Uh, you know, they've been doing that for years. A lot of times it's kind of passed on to the next person. Sometimes it's teachers, uh, people who are there to, uh, you know, to help our program. Uh, sports fan especially, that's a lot of work uh, for those people. And, and one of those things that St. Albert is lucky to have when our game is two or three or four hours away, the fact that they can broadcast a game and everyone can watch it on HD sitting in their living room or parents or grandparents or whatever that are far away, to have the ability to do that is something very, very special. Okay, so I want to make sure that we thank those groups of people uh, as well. Uh, a couple other people, uh, once again on Fridays, I don't think the Evazek brothers are here. They kind of show up on Friday nights and help us out. They're just going to show up out of the blue and, and go with us. Um, our water boys, I know the younger Sahachek, I think he I think he was about every game. Uh, it seemed like it was uh, kind of rotational after that, but I want to make sure I thank him and all the other youngsters that show up. That's something that I know my brother and I used to do when we were little growing up through the program. It's kind of a special thing to be able to do that, so thank you to those guys. Uh, Mark Sundrup's not here. He's kind of been in, he's been trying to quit stats. I think for like five or six years. I think he's on his 20 or 25th year of doing stats for uh, our program. Uh, once again, travels to all the games, gives up his time uh, to the program, never asks for anything in return. Uh, I know he had some help this year, and I hope I don't miss anybody. But I know Mr. Mathai helped out, Mr. Googles, Mr. Monahan. If I miss anybody on that uh, the group that helped out with stats this year I do apologize but I really appreciate those guys it's one of those things uh, that's important that we're able to keep track of that and put all of that in it's a lot of work uh, and once again something that's kind of taken off my plate somebody that is able to you know they just kind of do that on their own and if somebody's going to be gone they find people to cover so I really appreciate it so thank you those guys for helping out another person that kind of Roll back into the program this year, Mr. Kennebec. Joe Kennebec came back this year. Uh, he's kind of trying to find his role. He was just kind of a, a helper this year, was there for uh, support once, once again. Somebody you could call or text or do whatever, and he'd be willing to do whatever. Uh, big uh, supporter of St. Albert, not just the football program, uh, but the school in general. So thank you, Mr. Kennebec, for doing that. A couple of guys that the general public may not know, Austin Knowlton, Perrin Schmidt, these are not St. Albert people, these are people that the coaches have kind of been friends with outside of the program over the years, and they have uh, kind of adopted St. Albert as their, as their team. Uh, so Austin has worked in the box for us, meaning he's up on the radio on the headsets, talking to our coaches on the sideline. Uh, he drives to all of our away games once again, never asked for any pay or anything. Uh, and, and is kind of a, is following our program. Perrin does the same thing. Uh, he lives 45, 50 minutes away and still drives to all of our games for us. He's the one that sets up all of our 
side tape and our back tape to where we can watch those things on the sideline. Uh, once again, those are things that are very time consuming and those guys just show up every Friday and, and do that for us. So uh, I just wanted to recognize them. They're not here, uh, but uh, if you get a chance and if you know who they are, make sure that you thank them. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't come to these. Uh, Nick Finken. Uh, I think he's uh, I think he's a bit shy, and I don't think that he wants everybody to recognize him. But I don't think there's anybody in here uh, who wouldn't think uh, or who wouldn't recognize Nick as being somebody who really does love St. Howard. I know that it's technically his job of what he is doing, uh, but he has uh, taken that beyond that. He has become part of the the St. Howard family and does an excellent job making sure that we're all uh, staying healthy and doing the right things there. So if you get a chance to uh, thank Nick, make sure that you do that. <coughs> Uh, he's not here, but Brian Bowers, once again, he's kind of like uh, Mr. Sundrup. He uh, gives up his Friday nights, does a lot of those things that take up a lot of time. Uh, he's kind of been our uh, operational manager, making sure that we have everything that we need on the sidelines set up, ready to go. Once again, uses his own vehicle, travels everywhere, gives up all of his Fridays, uh, and uh, is, a, is a huge supporter, once again, not just of the football program, but of St. Albert. So if you see Mr. Bowers, make sure you thank him. <clears throat> before I get to this last group, like I said before, if I missed anybody, I, I do apologize. Uh, I just want to make sure that I thank everybody for everything. Uh, the littlest thing can be such a help, so I really do thank you. Uh, the last group, the assistant coaches. <clears throat> i got to be careful on this part. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of the season, I kind of took on a different role at St. Albert that was going to take up quite a bit more of my time. And when I was uh, visiting with them and kind of going back and forth whether coaching was going to be the, you know, be able to do that this year, we sat down and talked with them and, and I kind of explained that, you know, there's going to be times where I might not be able to be at practice or I'm going to be late or I have this or I have that depending on what I have to do. And uh, they were willing and able to take on that role, those extra tasks. Uh, once again, anything that I would ask of them, they were willing to do. And I don't think there's a lot of programs in the state where the head coach can be like, hey, I have this going on at school, you guys can handle it, everything runs smoothly, and we continue to do, uh, you know, to do what we do. So I really want to thank the assistant coaches. Uh, so I appreciate it. Love you guys. to our players the important part of all of this I think I saw an interview with I think it was Clemson's head coach the other day and they were asking what how the coach is prepared for everything he said really in the end it comes down to the players and that is true so I want to recognize those uh, those players that as we go through here uh, you know for the season that we had uh, I'm not going to go into great detail on each player except for our seniors this year similar to last year uh, they will have their opportunity with their senior year to uh, have a little more at length discussion. Uh, that doesn't mean that they weren't uh, extremely important. Uh, we know with our smaller senior class that our juniors, sophomores, and freshmen were integral in our in our success this year. Uh, so I'm going to talk about each group kind of as a whole and then individually about those seniors for this particular meeting. The group that might be the toughest is the freshman group, okay, the, the group that kind of gets at the bottom of the rung. They have to stay late after practice. They have to clean up everything. They kind of get all of those extra duties dropped on them. It's one thing if you played at St. Hour that everybody kind of has to go through. Uh, it's not really all that fun sometimes. Um, you know, you're the youngest in practice. Sometimes you can get beat up a little bit. Uh, but this group, it seemed by the end of the year, had kind of embraced that role. They even looked like they might be having a little bit of fun here and there. Uh, and as we go through, uh, you know, the rest of their high school years, they're going to be tremendous football players. So I like to call each of them up. Uh, freshman Brendan Monahan. Kale Hobbs. David Helton. Mm -hmm. 
John Helton. Mason Mazzella. Guess I'm going to talk about one freshman. Sam Goobles, unfortunately, got uh, kind of hurt there a little bit before our season really got kicked off, so we can get to see what he could do this year. But I do want to recognize Sam. Another group, the sophomore group, they, uh, once again, a lot of them played very important roles on Friday nights. A lot of them played really, really important roles leading up to Friday nights. We have those, the scout team practices that we have, the roles that they play, uh, extremely important, so I want to recognize them. Uh, Aiden Hill. We have an academic all district, Carter White. <laughs> Honorable mention all district, Dan McGrath. Academic All District, Gage Somerville. <laughs> Academic All District, Keaton Barnes. Academic All District, Lane Sunberg. Mr. Nate K. The only thing this uh, last sophomore needs to uh, learn is to warn me before he sends me pictures of his broken bones. So, <laughs> Mr. Williams, a hot check. Our junior, our junior class, our largest uh, group of uh, athletes, and I will say every single one of our juniors made on an all-district either athletically or academic. So that's something that I want to recognize. So the junior class. Uh, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't share this story, but I think I'm going to just kind of as a little plug for St. Albert, when I'm sitting in the all-district meeting and they're talking about the uh, academic all-district and they're talking about lowering the standards so more of their kids can make it the academic, uh, all-academic team, it kind of made me go, eh, I don't know if that's really what we want to do. I went through and looked at all of our kids. They would have qualified by the old standards. Uh, that's kind of a little plug for what we can do here at St. Albert, the fact that we focus on our academics as well as our, our athletics. Uh, and I think it was, uh, you know, goes to show what, what our kids are able to do. Playing extracurriculars, going to extracurriculars, it takes up a lot of their time. 
and yet they're still able to perform in the classroom. So that's very, uh, a very great thing. So the junior class, honorable mention all district and academic all district, Ben O'Neill. First team all district and academic all district, Bennett Gronstall. <laughs> academic all district, Brett Klusman. First team all district and academic all district, Kale McLaren. <laughs> First team all district and academic all district, Connor Turney. Second team all district and academic all district, Cy Patterson. Second team all district and academic all district, Greg Fagan. First team all district and academic all district, Jeff Miller. <laughs> academic all district, Owen Donor. First team all district, Sam Rollis. <coughs> we'll have to say our the next junior can recognize that the all district meeting there was no discussion on this person being the first team all district person. And that is uh, first team all district, academic all district, Sam Wilbur. <laughs> they were quite impressed. <laughs> nice job. And academic all district, Eric Mathai. seniors. Uh, the first senior I'd like to talk about is Aiden Camp, and I don't believe he's here this evening. Uh, he transferred in, came into the St. Albert program. Uh, that can be a difficult thing to do. Uh, 
once again, it kind of goes back to the idea that there's not a lot of programs that are run like uh, St. Albert. It can be a, a difficult task, let alone coming to a new school, but then getting used to, uh, you know, expectations and, and what we have at St. Albert. Uh, Aiden was able to do that. It seems like he was able to uh, fit into our program. Uh, he's not here, but I would like to recognize uh, Aiden Campin. Uh, Lance Wright, next person I'd like to talk a little bit about. It's funny, as a teaching most of these guys when they were in fifth grade, uh, I will admit that you watch them run around on the playground and those types of things, you can kind of tell which kids are leaders and which kids are going to, you know, be able to do this and do that. And Lance was one of those kids that just kind of stuck out. Okay? He was always, uh, you know, kind of took on that leadership role, whether it was the quarterback or this or whatever it was. Uh, the biggest thing that I can say about Lance, and I put in, I spoke to him after our uh, game at Earlham, is he might be one of the toughest kids that we've had go through our program. He uh, he had some games where he would get beat up pretty pretty bad, and a lot of people would have uh, kind of folded and taken themselves out of the game. But Lance was always somebody to uh, stand up and push through that, uh, and that's the biggest thing I can say about Lance is that he is uh, one of the toughest kids that I've seen. So Lance, right. Team all district and academic all district. Aiden Anisdell. If you had to go back and uh, we can clap here in a second, sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a human highlight reel. If you look at his. Uh, you know, some of the plays that he's made throughout his career at St. Howard, whether it's during practice or in games, uh, kind of those uh, ooh and ah moves when you start watching him on the field, especially some of his kick returns and runs and those types of things. Uh, somebody with uh, great athleticism and uh, was able to uh, move around to different positions. We kind of asked him to change his role throughout the year, uh, throughout his career, and he was willing and able to do that and did the best that he could. So we really appreciate that. Second team all district and academic all district, eight names. Now. Year after the second or third game, I think we were sitting in the hospital when I was visiting with Drew, and uh, well, I wasn't visiting with Drew so much as I was kind of a very highly medicated Drew. Uh, but uh, and his parents about uh, his, the rest of his football career, and it was kind of in question on whether or not he would be able to come back and play football. Uh, at that point in time, I can honestly say I, I probably wouldn't have thought that he was going to be able to with the injury that he sustained. Uh, he proved me and everyone else wrong. Uh, he did everything that he needed to do. He worked his rear end off all summer, uh, did exactly what uh, was asked of him, and came back and uh, performed at a very high level this year. Uh, also a great leader on the team, a captain on the team, uh, somebody I'm extremely proud of. Uh, Drew Gronstall was second team all district and academic all district. So the last three awards that we're going to give away are MVP, our Al Lieber, and our Sportsmanship Award. Uh, these are voted on by the players. The coaches don't have any say in this. Uh, at the end of the season, the uh, players are, we kind of explain what each of those awards mean, and the players vote on that. This year uh, is one of the kind of most clear-cut years that we've had, where a lot of the votes landed right in line with each other. Uh, the first award we're going to give away uh, is the MVP Award. And I visited or I talked a little bit about him earlier. He was a leader on the team, hey, somebody who's uh, 
who's a captain on our team, and both on offense and defense, one of the toughest kids on our team, our MVP this year, Mr. Lance Wright. Uh, the Al Lieber Award is kind of one of those, this represents what a true Falcon football player is supposed to be. Uh, the, the player that was voted this year, a leader on our team, kind of in a, in a quiet way, kind of lead by example kind of way. Uh, but once again, one of those guys that you know is going to do the right thing, somebody that you can trust with uh, responsibility. Our Al Lieber Award this year goes to Mr. Cale McLaren. important award because I won it when I was in high school. <laughs> Most of these guys were better than us. They played, uh, they won like MVPs and things like that. <laughs> the Sportsmanship Award. Uh, I've talked a little bit about Drew already, but he is uh, extremely and well deserving of this award. Uh, kind of another point of those stories, I, I, as a first year coach last year when I went out on the field and he was hurt and he's like, I'm ready to go back in, all you gotta do is just fix it and I'll go back in and play. So uh, once again, uh, somebody who uh, who has uh, recently accepted the school that he wants to go to, very, very proud of that. Sounds like he's gonna be continuing his, uh, his education to uh, help people and that's gonna be a great thing. So Mr. Drew Grunstall. celebrating um, a very successful football program, a su successful football year. Successful, we didn't get to stay, but well, that isn't what makes it successful. What makes it successful is that we learn to win, we also learn to lose, because that, as you all know, that's what life is all about. You win a few and lose a few. Well, today, um, we, we come because these, these guys, they're all winners. They're winners. You know that, I you know that too. So we pray in gratitude for being able to enjoy this meal together. So let us pray together. Bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty. In Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit, amen. Thank you, Father. Probably let your parents go first, but I think we'll let the uh, oh, senior have some stuff to talk about. Yeah. The boys want to. Boys want to. Okay. Oh, Real quick. Remember everything we taught you in fifth grade. Alright, so I'll go first here. As Coach kind of touched on a little bit before, we had two guys that really helped with stats this year. They traveled every game, were there an hour early. Uh, that helps a lot, so we just like to say thank you to uh, Mr. Ewell and Mr. Mahan. Um, my first coach is uh, Mr. Joe Kennebec. Uh, I've known him since I was a little kid. His daughters uh, helped babysit me when I was little, known for most of my life. 
it's kind of odd seeing him from like a football point of view, because I always know him as a nice guy. <laughs> and then he started yelling at people, and then it just got, it was just great to see the other side of him. <laughs> Coach Tucker, um, him just um, with him being our one of our coaches, he's a, usually the first one there for listing. He's always staying late and helping us when we want to watch film or left after practices. He's he's actually a lot like me in our personalities. <laughs> very tough, very tough. <laughs> Talk like this. <laughs> no, we both had some types of practices, but. Um, he's just a great coach, probably one of my favorite coaches throughout my high school career. Again, so Coach Nolan's not here, but as Coach said, he kind of was there, took away from his own time. He recently just got married, so I'd like to thank our uh, congratulate on that. But, uh, he used to play with Coach Chantilly, and they're good friends, and he just really helped uh, beat up in the box and would. Uh, communicate with our other coaches and just help us out the game. So thank you for that. Uh, my second coach is uh, Coach Josh Ryan. He was um, our defensive line coach my freshman and sophomore year. He kind of still he kind of stepped back as a helper my junior and senior year. But I always remember him telling me to play lower because I would always play way too high. <laughs> And I just always want to thank you for that. And my next, not really coach, but person is Nick Finkin. Um, with him helping with all our injuries and everything, he's always there to tape us before good game practices. Um, he always seemed to tell me when I can get back, and never really let me get back. He always let me figure it out on my own that I wasn't ever set yet. He's always really good at helping get back to where I need to be 100% as fast as I can. Uh, my next coach is Coach Driver. Uh, I know he kind of had to step up with uh, older Gentile, kind of having some medical issues. So it wasn't like ideal for him to do that, but he was there. And he uh, stepped up for us and got us ready to play on Friday nights. So kind of brought intensity back to some practices, and I know he's busy with some other his other stuff, so we thank him for taking his time to do this. My third coach is uh, Coach Trey Bowman. It was really nice to have uh, a D1 athlete on our coaching staff, and he was always kind of, he was a friend and a coach really most of my high school career, so I just want to thank him for that. defense and offense and just kind of had to step up with kind of being that head coach too at practice sometimes when Coach Ryan couldn't be there they all kind of did that so we thank him for that but he also would just like take his time out of his day and like would make highlight tapes if you ask him to and like he really tries to get you noticed and be a friend and uh, just make sure everything's going good with you so we're thank you for that. Besides me just knowing him as our get back guy on the sidelines, uh, I know that he comes out and helps pick up everything after games and sets up for games, so I'd like to thank him for that. Um, fourth coach, Coach Perrin. Um, besides him being on the sidelines and helping our coach with the huddle and everything, and set up the cameras, he does a real good, nice job with that. And just like what Kyle Barnes said a couple years ago, I've never heard him speak a word in my life. But I hope he's a good guy. Um, so thank you to him. And finally, 
I have a bowl coach in Silly. Um, he was our defensive coordinator before Driver steps in. <laughs> he played a real nose down type of football. What was it K I S S? Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> and he was, he was a great coach. He also helped me with my running back coaches at the, at the beginning. But unfortunately, he couldn't finish the season with us, but I still have to say thank you to him. And uh, finally, we have head coach, Coach Ryan. Uh, out of the four seniors, I was the only one that had him as a position coach. And so it's always nice to have him as he was always really kind of special to me because he always felt like I always felt like he was in my corner. He was always there for me. And he was always just really a great coach for me.